If you've ever seen this channel before, you know I love desk setups, monitors, tech, everything that is behind me. Today I have some really cool monitors I wanna show you. These are the BenQ 2705U and the 3205U monitors. Let's get right into it. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing these BenQ monitors. Now, just to get it out of the way, BenQ did send me these monitors in exchange for a review. However, um, they gave me free reign to talk truly about what my thoughts and opinions are on this. So I have not signed anything that said I have to say only good things about this. I'm gonna be real with y'all and I'm going to let you know the things that I like about it and the things that I don't like about it. Now, I've been a fan of BenQ and their monitors for a while now. I've been wanting to get my hands on these for a couple years and I just never really pulled the trigger on them. So when they reached out and wanted to send these to me, I was especially excited to talk about these. I think BenQ is really catered towards the modern creator. Whether you do video work, photo work, graphic design work, or really anything, they have a monitor that's pretty much suited for everyone's needs. Now these monitors behind me are the Design View series. Now what this is is basically catered more towards the graphic designer, the AutoCAD designers. Now you may be wondering why I would even have these Design View monitors since I am doing photo and video for a living. But whenever they reached out and wanted to send these to me, I was actually really intrigued to give them a shot because when it comes to like the color spaces and everything, they really do cover everything that I would need as a videographer and a photographer, minus the P3 color space, which we'll get into later. But I really thought, okay, these monitors coming in at this price point, here's everything they offer. I really think this could be the perfect monitor under $1,000 for anyone who's doing graphic design, photo, or video work. Both of these monitors are gonna have the same specs minus the size. These monitors are 4K IPS displays with HDR10. They cover 99% sRGB and Rec. 709 color spaces, and they come Kalman calibrated. Now, when it comes to those color spaces, that's pretty standard for a mid-tier to higher-end computer monitor. That's really what you're looking for if you need any sort of color accuracy. These monitors are not Thunderbolt, but they do have USB-C. They've got HDMI and DisplayPort, so I have both these monitors running via DisplayPort into my Mac Studio, and that's really all I need. You've got HDMI 2.0. It's only a 60 hertz monitor, so no need for 2.1 there. At the time of filming this video, you can get the 27 inch for 599 and the 32 inch for 799. Now let's go back to the color calibration because this is really a big selling point for BenQ monitors. Now, if you do any sort of creative work where color is important to you, I think BenQ is kind of a no brainer for a lot of people. This is what has always sold me on their monitors and one of the reasons why I was very interested in getting one. These monitors come Kalman calibrated, which pretty much means right out of the box, you know you're gonna be getting the best colors possible. If you're not familiar with Kalman, it is a color calibration software that is widely used in the creative industry. So you know right out of the box, you're getting something that's gonna be accurate and true to an industry standard. This is huge for me because I edit and color all of my videos. I wanna make sure that they look good from shooting to post to sending it out to a client. I wanna make sure that nothing looks off. So when you look at these monitors, you just know going into it that you're gonna have an accurate color. So yeah, from a tech spec perspective, Tech, wow, that's a tongue twister. It looks great on paper, but what does that actually mean? I can tell you if you've never used a truly calibrated monitor right out of the box when I turned it on for the first time and loaded it up on my computer, I could see a difference. It's really hard to describe without seeing it in person, but if you were to compare a calibrated monitor versus just a standard monitor right next to them, you'll probably be able to tell a difference. So the monitor looks great both on paper and visually, but also the build quality and design of it is really nice too. I not only want a monitor to look good and serve a purpose, but I also want it to be aesthetically pleasing so that my desk setup looks nice. The monitor stand is probably one of the nicest monitor stands within that price range that I've seen. The stand gives you your typical tilt and height adjustment. I would say the only gripe I have with the stand is that you're able to flip it vertically, but only with the 27 inch. I wasn't able to do it with the 32 inch at least with it on the stand. Maybe if I take it off and then flip it, then put it back on, I can. I usually never have my monitor on its actual stand and I always mount it on a desk arm, but I actually like the look of this monitor stand so much that I kept it there, at least for the 32 inch. And then of course, I threw the 27 inch on a mounted arm just because I have it mounted vertically. So let me walk you around and kind of show you the build quality and some of the things that I like about this monitor. Of course, I have my trusty little vlog cam here just because it's a lot easier for me to show you and talk instead of shoot B-roll and add it in later because I just I just forget things. Okay, so we have the two monitors here. Now, 
One of my favorite parts about this monitor, and I'll just cut to the chase here, is this little tray back here. This panel tray thing comes with both monitors and basically gives you the ability to throw all your cables up into the inputs here and then you can hide it. So look how clean that looks. You don't have any cables running out the side like crazy. That's actually an issue I have with the other one that I need to fix. You can tell that's without it and then that's with it. It just gives it a nice clean look. So if you come around here, just looks seamless. Now, build quality itself. It is plastic. Most monitors like this are gonna be plastic unless you go for like, honestly, I think an Apple display is the only monitor that's not gonna be plastic and I could be totally wrong, but that's fine. Comes in plastic. I don't really mind that. It's just a monitor. It's not moving around like crazy. So there's really no need for it to be sturdier than that. But if you come around the front here, it just looks nice. I also love that they don't have a bunch of branding up here. So it's very sleek without being like, boom, Ben Q. Now they have subtle branding down here. Totally fine with, I love that. Here's the monitor stand itself, incredibly durable. I think it looks really nice, especially on a 32 inch. It doesn't seem overly bulky for the size of the screen. And these are both connected to my Mac studio right here. We have this running in via display port. This one running in via display port through an adapter. And so we're able to have these dual monitors here. Now you can see the viewing angle here. These are IPS displays, so it's not the best from the side. It's gonna get very washed out when you go to the side here, but directly in front, they look incredible. Now if we move down here, we have the hot key puck. And this is really nice because it gives you all of your controls that you need. You've got brightness controls here. You click in the center and it brings up all of the menu options here you can change everything you need and you also have these three presets here which basically change the color profiles we have a macbook color profile here which is supposed to match the look of your macbook pro a little nicer which is basically just crushing it's just adding more contrast so that way it can match that xdr display a little bit better i don't really use that i would rather keep it on srgb or rec 709 just because it's a little more accurate for what i'm using it for we've got a low blue light mode which just cuts blue light um, if you're into that so i keep it here usually i also have another one down here so that's something that comes with every monitor and it's just nice to be able to adjust the brightness without having to go fumbling under here looking for the settings and stuff you can just scroll the wheel and adjust it to your liking now moving to the back of the monitor over here, we've got our BenQ logo right here. Down here without the cable tray, you can see all of the inputs and options we have down here. Now this has KVM pairing, which from my understanding basically means that you can have multiple computers connected to a single monitor and run them at the same time. So it just kind of gives you like a graph of how to have that set up. You've got all of your USB, your display port, your HDMIs, everything right there. We've got our toggle here, some function settings, your power. Then on the side here, we've got your headphone jack, a USB type A and a USB type C so you can power a phone or something. Um, I actually did not even realize that was here until I started shooting this video. So it's kind of a nice addition now knowing that I have some extra power there if I wanna plug my phone in or something while I'm working. I think for what this monitor offers, not only from a price perspective, but just from the tech specs, this thing is great for most people. I would say if you do photo and video work, this is gonna be great. If you don't wanna spend $1,000 plus on monitors, I think that this is going to give you an insane amount of power. It's gonna give you that color accurate look that you need. Also, if you're just using this for everyday use. If you just want a nice monitor that you can use for your daily tasks, if you're working from home, working in an office or whatever, this is also gonna be great for you and you can just know that you're getting an accurate look. And I think the price itself is really where this monitor will appeal to most people. Now, if you wanna get into a higher end monitor, something that has P3 color space, has Thunderbolt for your MacBook Pro connections, something like that, yeah, you're gonna to have to spend well over $1,000. They have a lot of great options as well in their photo view series and also their video series where they have P3 color spaces, they have Adobe RGB, they have Thunderbolt connections, stuff like that. 
I think those range anywhere from like $1,100 to like $1,300. Now, another thing to talk about if you do photo and video work is, do you need P3 or is Rec. 709 okay? Rec. 709 is still a very standard color space. It's what most people are using. Not everybody has something that's going to be able to show proper P3 color spaces. However, this is something that's in all of the Apple products. Now we see a lot of content on our phones and stuff like that. So P3 is becoming a more popular option within monitors for creatives to be able to accurately color their videos for that color space. I believe it's not one of those things that is just going to ruin your productivity or like the accuracies of your color because you're not coloring in P3 or whatever it is. Rec. 709 is still very much a standard. I think it will be for a while, even though we are moving more and more into the P3 color space. Now, who do I think this monitor is good for? Of course, it is their design view monitor. So designers, people doing AutoCAD and 3D modeling, this is going to be specifically for them as far as some of the features. There's a lot of animation specific features that this monitor includes that are helpful for people doing that type of work. However, I think this monitor is also amazing for people doing photo and video work because of the color accuracy that you get in it. For the price, you truly are getting an amazing monitor, a great display that's going to give you the best look out of your images. And also for the daily drivers who just need a solid monitor for whatever work they do, whether it's administrative or just answering emails, stuff like that, this monitor is going to look amazing. It's not gonna cost you a fortune. And I think it's gonna give most people what they need out of a monitor. Now, if I were to give this monitor a con, it's basically just from my standpoint of things that I need, and that's the lack of P3 color space. I think that I might go into one of their monitors that has that because I really wanna future-proof my workflow with coloring but it's really not a big deal for most creatives. I really don't think that you have to prioritize a monitor based on that. Most people don't even know what color spaces are and so that's like the last thing they look at when they get a monitor. So to summarize, if you're looking for an incredible monitor that is color accurate, but not going to cost you an arm and a leg, I would highly recommend looking into these monitors. I'm of course going to leave a link in the description below if you want to take a look at them. Again, thank you so much to BenQ for sending these monitors over for me to test out and let you know my thoughts on it. Hopefully I get to work with them more in the future and do some more monitor reviews like this. If you did enjoy this video and it did help you with your monitor buying decision, be sure to give it a thumbs up, say hello in the comments and let me know your thoughts on these monitors if you've used them or if you have any great alternatives that you would recommend someone to check out. But that's gonna be it for this video. I will see you all in the next one.